Did I ever mention how adorable it is that Kurt turns his cap backwards when he faces a boss? Seriously, go back and look at the other bosses, he really does it. Anyway, while Bryce plays Missile Command with us, we have to play Circular Breakout with him. Because of the way the slingshot aims, it's best to get as level with him as possible, and as close to him too. Many a shot have been missed because he ran away like a space invader. Now what other arcade games can I reference in the first five minutes? You won't get hurt by the yellow barriers by the way, so you could, if you were feeling especially daring, use a burst beam at the very start of a fight and get right up in Bryce's face and score a hit on him in the first 10 seconds. But touching Bryce is a one hit kill, so you do so at your own risk. Now, Bryce seems pretty mad already, what with the red colouring and everything, but once you get a hit on him, he gets really mad. I mean, if you don't start booking it immediately, you are going to find things very interesting very quickly. On the plus side, this big wave of energy blasts is really good at clearing out the breakable blocks that are scattered all around the arena. This whole final boss fight is pretty awesome, really. It's challenging and involved at all times, forcing you to keep moving lest Bryce's shots catch up to you. The arena is varied, the breakable blocks create new pathways as the fight rages on, and just try and tell me this music doesn't fit the mood perfectly. You can't do it.
here's where things get a little tricky. When Bryce is angry, he surrounds himself with a shield made entirely of blue, and then regenerates the yellow shields. But when he gets down to his last hit, he keeps the blue shield up, and leaving just a small opening through which he can actually hit him. At this point, the key is patience. With the opening rotating and Bryce constantly moving around, it's best to not try and chase the weak spot. As long as you stay safe yourself and keep close to him, he'll eventually give you the shot you need. And there it is, good night, sweet prince. Bryce, we just killed you after waltzing through your surface defenses and storming your castle. Oh my god, we killed someone. What could you possibly have behind that door that would keep us from getting to the center? Well, that's certainly not a bad effort. Uh, hey, Kurt, you can probably handle this yourself, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna wait outside. Have fun with that. Don't go causing any mass destruction or getting yourself nearly killed trying to grab a souvenir without me.
The final souvenir was a fleeing rat. This little fellow is too fat to move. He must have been left behind when all the other rats fled the moon. It's a little dark, but the box of crayons pretty much confirmed that children get lost forever in the maze, so you know, it's probably on par.
after going through this whole journey, I still don't know if I'd call Planet in Distress a hard game, at least by the general standards the hard games thread is set with Mega Man ROM hacks and Locomolito games and Gradius and Contra and so on. Yes, the game got quite challenging in these final couple of hours, but I don't think the ramp up to that point was unreasonably steep, or that it was especially difficult to begin with. On normal mode, the game kept a steady pace, introduced new gameplay elements with each new area, and was generally pretty good about placing items in dispensers in such a way that you'd always have the tools to deal with a given problem, even though you would almost never need more than what you had an infinite supply of. Still, I guess the game had to be fairly challenging or it wouldn't have gotten the criticisms it did, like I mentioned back in the maze. Even though it was created for an audience that didn't largely exist by the time it came out, I still think it's an amazing game. Lots of beautiful scenery, a soundtrack that is calming and toe-tapping in equal measure, and just lots of cool set pieces that make it stand out to me far more than the swath of puzzle platforms released on Steam that this is so easily mistaken for. So that's just about everything that PID has to offer, or at least everything that it had to offer when it came out. There are still the 72 challenge rooms, and if you thought anything in the game so far was hard, getting top rankings on those makes all this look like child's play, but I think I'll leave that for others to explore. In spite of having shown nearly every inch of this game off, I still very much recommend buying and playing it yourself. It's only $10 on Steam, and if you buy it from Might and Delight's website, you can get a DRM-free version, Steam code, the soundtrack, lots of concept art, and a very early version of the game design document circa 2010, when the game was called Peculiar Destination and was going to be quite different in a gameplay sense. It's well worth a read. And there's the stats. About 4 hours and 400 deaths down from when I first played the game. Quite a decent improvement if I say so myself. And I ended up getting, if I counted correctly, all but 3 of the secret rooms without actually intending to. There might be more, but I'm pretty sure there was just one in the dining halls, one in the workshop, and one in the stronghold that I missed on normal mode. And that's all there is for normal mode, but we're not done with PID just yet. Take a look at hard mode and we'll close this thing out properly.